Time is money. At Southern Property Management, we step in to take care of the day-to-day management of your property as well as your tenant relationships, leaving you free to focus on maximizing your investment. With over 60 years experience managing commercial properties from West Texas to Fort Worth, we can use our expertise to manage and control expenses and remove the hassle of the insurance process and needed repairs. We would love the opportunity to save you time, money, and possibly a few headaches. Friends, welcome to Keeping Good Company. I'm your host, Brandy Bell, and we are so glad you're joining us. Today, we are beginning preparations for a super fun project for a family who has a heart for serving their community. We're gonna be giving their home a front porch refresh and adding a simple but vibrant gathering space for their friends and family to enjoy. We'll also be working on various DIYs and gardening projects, visiting some unique people and places around the city, and then, pulling together all of the things we learned to create a beautiful space for the family as a way to show our appreciation for their hard work and service. I recently heard the expression, all roads lead to Monahans. Well, I hope that's the case because that's where we're headed and I'm directionally challenged. We are calling this episode Prickly Pears and Curb Appeal. We have a huge weekend, so let's get started. Around here, we believe community is everything. We believe kindness moves mountains and small thoughtful acts have the power to make lasting change. Our family is proof of that. And we believe it's through curiosity, connection, camaraderie, and some good old fashioned celebration that we can find ways to unite and be good neighbors. So join us on our give back adventures as we try to leave this world just a little better than we found it. Welcome to Keeping Good Company. When I was thinking of the cities that we would do for season one, uh, my first instinct was to go to the cities that, uh, that kind of first employed me when the boys were little. I like to say um, the cities that fed my family. And I had clients in Monahans, you know, shortly after moving here, and they are just such a unique community. You know, it's very dry, it's very dusty, it's, it's West Texas, there's not a ton of green. And so when we were, you know, talking about service projects, I was like, oh, it would be so fun to do a front porch refresh, uh, just, you know, for the changing of the seasons, make the house feel all cozy and inviting and, you know. So one of my favorite things to make for outdoor refreshes are wreaths. I feel like nothing says, hello, welcome, like a wreath. And so as we're doing our front porch refresh, we have to have a wreath. I want to keep it pretty neutral so that the homeowners can use it anytime. It doesn't just have to be for any specific season. So I'm gonna go with a neutral color palette and also try to use flowers that may not necessarily um, direct towards any specific season. How cute is that? So cute. And there's our tiny little succulent pot that we're gonna put on top. I'm gonna put our pots in another large succulent right in the middle where I'm gonna put the bow. And then I'll add some filler around it. And that's it, super simple. Like this is one of those DIYs that absolutely anybody can do. And however it ends up is the way it's supposed to look. It doesn't have to look like mine or anybody else's. You get to have fun with it.
We like to get the community involved as much as possible when we're choosing who we're going to do our acts of kindness for. And so we went to social media to ask everybody to nominate someone who had done something in their community, who is in a service oriented industry, like a first responder or someone in the military or an educator, something like that, so that we could just bless them with a front porch refresh. And we got lots of good responses, but it was um, it was one in particular, I think that tugged at our hearts. It's from a young lady named Brennan, and this is what she wrote. My father is 52 and didn't grow up rich. He has no college degree and has worked so hard to make a living for my brother and my mother and myself. Now he does it to spoil his granddaughter. He was fire chief for a really long time and is now retired, but very active helping them after retirement. He's been a county commissioner now for over 15 years and has really helped to turn Monahan's around. My parents live in a single wide trailer with a metal porch, but I know it would bring them such joy to get a nice porch refresh. His name is Eddie Nelms. I'm obsessed with DIYs. I just like making stuff. I used to watch Carol Duvall probably 20 years ago and she had this craft show and I loved it and I never missed it. And so I just, I have a love of making stuff for other people because you're giving your time and not just an object. You're, you're putting yourself into something. And so I'm gonna try to make a lot of DIYs. So we're in the big barn because we're gonna propagate some prickly pears. Do you remember these? I do remember these. <laughs> she had permission to we did have permission, so we uh, we got these from the museum uh, that we took a tour on in Monahans, the Million Barrel Museum. And Tori actually was super scared of rattlesnakes because there's rattlesnake warnings. But I got in there and I cut these cactus pads, and um, now I'm going to show how to propagate them, which is really not hard. These are very sturdy plants. So we cut them um, 10 days ago and we need to let them callus. So I let them callus. I laid them all out on a table and they got this little hard crusty callus. And we did that because we don't want them to get too much water when we first put them in dirt and water them. So just take a peat pot. And the cool thing about these is our homeowner, when these start to get bigger, she can dig a hole in the ground, drop this puppy right in there. You just bury the whole cup. Isn't that amazing? It's like magic. It's like magic, it breaks down. He's so cute. He's so cute. He's so cute. Doesn't this make you happy? It this does make, make you happy. This makes me happy. This is how you know that they've propagated. You go and you like, you kind of pull on it a little bit. If, it, if it's hard to pull, that means the roots are forming. If it pulls too easily, then give it another couple weeks. But this has always worked for me. My mom is really good at propagating cactuses, so I just use her methods. Isn't that fun? We are gonna put these on our pallet garden wall, along with some of these guys over here. There's a giant worm right there on your hand. That makes me gag. That's okay. not a worm. Brandy, oh, what is get your, Brandy, get your glasses. What is that? Oh, it's they're a little leaf. succulent leaves. Those are not worms. When my mama passed, I inherited her snake plant and it's been a treasure of mine. So I split it, which means I took it out of the pot, cleaned off all the dirt, and then went through and cut its root ball. And from my mom's one big plant, I think I made nine, nine different snake plants. We need to be saving objects. We need to be upcycling. We need to be using the things that we have. So let's cover some pots. What we have in this pot right here is one part concrete, one part paint, one part sand. Some of the sand coincidentally was stuck in our shoes from when we visited the sand hills, so we added it to this. But if you want a smoother look, see we kind of went for a chunky concrete look, but if you want it smoother, a little more like French plaster and less like concrete, you can use mortar. And then this is the easy part. You literally can cover anything. 
So this was fiberglass and it was really worn out. Um, it was something we upcycled. This was something I picked up at an estate sale. It had starfish on it, which isn't really our theme, it's ceramic. So we coated it in two coats. And then um, this one is plastic. So I'm gonna let Sid show you guys how easy it is to use a stippling brush. Also, if you don't wanna use a brush, you can put gloves on, just scoop it up with your hand and pat it on there. Um, but this is a super easy way to coat the pots. Let the first coat dry and then add a second coat. And like, this is all you do. You smell like donkey <laughs> to me. Can you see what the abuse idea is? You can use any color paint you want. We specifically asked Brenda what were her favorite colors and what would she like to see outside. And she said the grays, the whites, and some light blues. So we mixed this to be a super pale gray so we can stick with a color family that the homeowner's looking for. So I feel like we should finish this up, get them all in our boxes and grab our concrete pots and start getting ready for Monahans. What do y'all think? We close? Yeah. Pretty close? Okay, we'll see you in Monahans. One of the things I would tell homeowners, you know, when when I worked as a designer full time was I feel like there are two very sacred spaces in a person's life, their family and their home. Number one being their family. And so if somebody allows you into their family, I'm not sure there's a bigger honor. The second place would be their home. If someone allows you into their home, that's a great honor and I take it really seriously. So whether it's just a front porch refresh or a complete new home build, um, there's always that pressure that they're trusting you with something that's super important to them. That's, that's their most valuable thing other than their family. And I don't want to let people down, you know, it just, it doesn't matter how many homeowners I've worked for or worked with over the years. It all feels new every single time that I just, I really want to make them happy. Today is going to be super, super windy. So some of the things that I had planned for today will be moved to our work day tomorrow. So for today, we're going to, they have these really cool vintage chairs that we saw the first time we came out. So we're gonna use wire brushes and scrub off all the rust. And then we're gonna use a paint primer. So we're gonna give all of their outdoor furniture a facelift. Um, my friend Sean's coming out. He and I go back like 15 years in construction. So he's gonna help me build a window box for some flowers and make some shutters. We're gonna do tons of um, Since we don't want to do anything too permanent, we want to always give people the ability to change things and to make it their own. We're just trying to give them a jumping off point. Everything's going to be super neutral. So um, just small projects, but hopefully small projects that make a big impact. All in the West Texas wind. Co-worker.
So we are going to be working on the recipes that we're going to take with us over to Monahan's. And so we're creating a snack, kind of a little um, heavy hors d'oeuvre per se, for when we're finished on Saturday night with our big reveal. And I love charcuterie cups. And I know charcuterie cups aren't necessarily anything new, but I like to give them themes. And so I pick out my theme for my charcuterie cups before I decide what goes in it. Because I love themes. So this one is gonna be a buffalo wing cup. So let me show you how easy it is to build a charcuterie cup. And I'm gonna add a little bit of my magic buffalo seasoning. So this is actually my cheeky ranch buffalo seasoning. And it's not quite as spicy as a traditional buffalo seasoning because it's got the ranch that kind of tames it a little bit. So I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of this. And that's the first thing I'm gonna put in our cup. So we have like a pretzel stick, a couple celery sticks, and we have some carrots, some spicy turkey sticks. So I'm a cheese fan. We're gonna add multiple kinds of cheese. So I have a mozzarella stick and then a little bit of sharp cheddar. And then I even made tiny ranch Parmesan crisps. You guys, these are insanely easy to make. It's so delicious. I just used my cookie scoop and a little bit of shredded Parmesan and I fill the cookie scoop with the Parmesan. And then I drop it on my parchment paper and I put a little bit of our homemade ranch seasoning. Again, this is also um, linked in the show notes on our website and I sprinkle a little on there I crisp them for maybe seven to 10 minutes at 350 and they make these fun little chips and they're super delicious. And so I'm gonna add a little Parmesan crisp, add a few nuts, and then I'm gonna take a skewer and add a few olives. I'm gonna stick these out of the top and there you just have a fun little snack that everybody will get to enjoy after a long, what I think is gonna be very hot day in Monahans, Texas. Here, try one. Oh, yeah. Tell me what you think of my Parmesan crisps. Can you taste the ranch? Oh yeah. Is it good? Very good. Okay. Luke, you have to eat one of my Parmesan crisps. I will happily eat one. Wait. You get to eat it in slow-mo though. <laughs> Sid, I made you one too. Ooh. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say words: taco, chocolate. <laughs> oh, that's all I got. Why do y'all let me do shit like that? I don't think we there was you. any stopping me. Paul Love has been around since 1988. We've had a lot of family members in there. My son is, is a part of our team. I beat a lot on the on the deal side of it. And my son, on the other hand, you know, he's a little more a little more style trend oriented. Do have a little bit more tone down on style? I'm a little bit upscale on style. So we can we usually find the medium to get the customer where they need to go. And that's exactly what you'll find at Paul Evans in Midland or Odessa. A great deal on the latest trends and styles. Right out of high school, I just started working for a dealership and um, kind of started from the bottom and just started washing cars and became a lot attendant. And I love the I love the shop. I've always loved cars. It just evolved into a job. And then I worked for somebody for so long. And it's like, I need to do this for myself. I met Rosie and um, she's never said no. She just said, let's do it. And we started saving money. You know, her, her background and my background, and we met it together and we opened up our business. Epic's located on the corner of John Ben Shepherd and Highway 80, Odessa, Texas. EpicCollision.net. Here's Eddie. Have you seen the movie Rambo? You know the guitarist? Van Halen? Have you seen Christmas Vacation? 
He's nothing like that, Eddie. So here's Eddie. He is a study in contrasts. That's kind of what I've come up with. So when you first meet him, he's just got kind of this tough exterior and he's very to the point and he just like no holds barred, says what he means. And um, he's just, you know, what you see is what you get. And then as we're working our way through Monahan's and we're visiting the museum and we're visiting the restaurant and we're, we're talking to all these people, we find out that Eddie's just a big old squishy teddy bear and he's super involved in helping out his community in every possible way he can. It's a, it's a tough crew to keep in line. You probably... I have. Yeah, I, I, I really yeah, just think I just want the wire brushing Very just kind of nice knocks and stuff too. off. And I like to do everything by hand because it's more um, effective and efficient. That's why I bring volunteers. I'm like, look, I don't have a ton of money, but I can pull together some volunteers. So me and Tori and Sydney came out, and we were um, we were painting murals, and we multiple people that we talked to that day when we were telling them what we were doing they're like oh we know eddie eddie did this oh. and eddie did that and then when we were at the museum we were with ellen and the whole time she was like oh well we have that big spinny light oh that was eddie's and then oh well we got the steeple yeah that was eddie and by the time we were done it was like do you feel like we spent the whole day learning about what eddie has done in monahan's and you didn't even know we were doing that it was just Pure coincidence. Everybody knows. I have said that it is the rough environment that yes. makes the people. Yes. Do you agree? Absolutely. Like it's the it's the climate. It's harsh. It's uh, the constant economy shifts. It's all of those things that really I think makes the people beautiful here. Yes. I agree. Just my uh, opinion. Strong, yeah. strong, people. very strong, strong very loyal. Family. Yeah. Well, you know, when my daughter was sick, we survived from our community. Yeah. yeah. They kept us going. We stayed there six months. We just lost everything. Oh, my. So they they kept us going. Yeah. So that's why I, I huh? just give back. Have I mentioned how much I hate the West Texas wind sometimes? fell in love with the vintage metal chairs that the homeowners have, Brenda and Eddie, and I knew I wanted them to be a focal point for the project. They loved the chairs too, and they're super comfortable. Just wanted to give them a fresh coat of paint, and spray paint is amazing. It's long-term wear and tear is just gonna, I feel like, outshine anything else. So I am a huge fan of spray paint. Is my butt black now? There's so much spray paint in my hair. We are racing the wind. Spray paint is not my friend. It's not. Do you know how many things Cindy and I have spray painted in the years? Hundreds of things. Yep. Do you know how many things I've done with this girl? <laughs> Hundreds of things. Cindy has been working with me for I think close to 18 years. Cindy is like having a counselor for free all the time with you while she's working. So Cindy has painted with me, she's helped me with murals, she's helped me with design jobs. She's been at every workshop that I've hosted in the last 10 years. She is one of the few people that are allowed to yell at me. So you will probably hear her yelling at me through the next uh, few seasons, but she's a saint, I love her. And she's just one of those people that have been with me forever and she makes my life better. Shake them good, Brand. Shake them. Get a workout in those arms. Who needs style when you have spray paint? When you're stressed, you go and eat Mexican food because queso makes everything better. I'm 75. I've been here forever. And um, 
my family, we all worked every position there was to work here, uh, from washing dishes, scrubbing floors, serving, cooking. Um, we've been a family restaurant from day one. I told that my mom made you famous, Dad. She was a thick <laughs> kid, and you got the glory. But my dad was uh, such a people person. Yeah, and he loved children too. So. Um, when uh, he got, he became, he celebrated 90 years here when uh, Kent and uh, Brian and the rest of the investors came together because I couldn't no longer take care of it. I was taking care of my father and things weren't going well for me. And um, they stepped in and only by the grace of God, because they had their own, they have their own successful business. So the other, the other investors, loved us i feel loved us so much that they invested what it was theirs theirs they they did there was some ownership in it like they were like no we have to keep it open because it's it they do feel like they belong here so you think you're going to a restaurant for some queso and you find out you're getting all these life lessons and you end up crying a big portion of the meal I will forever be grateful. And I, uh, they stepped in and uh, remodeled it and uh, brought ferments back to life. And I'm gonna start crying. Yeah, we'll just cry with you. It's okay, you can cry. We're a bunch of criers around here. Thank you for, for doing this. It's, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes little places like Monahan's. To me, Monahan's is a great place because you see all these wide open spaces and great sunsets, great people. And in true West Texas fashion, as we're talking to Miss Lily, more people come to the table and sit down with us. I have a long story, but shortly after my family realized after I moved to Midland, because I followed my ex, that he was not there, and it's just me and my three children, it was about six months into it, and they could not, they could not understand, because we're coastal girls, like island, you know. Anyway, they were like, you have to come home. Like, why would you stay there? They just could not fathom it. And I said, I can't, I just, I think this is a good place for me and my boys. And so we stayed in Midland. So we are going to go visit the current fire chief. Eddie was a former fire chief and we're gonna to get to see some fire trucks. These are all ex-military vehicles and uh, Eddie Nelms and his, his county crew Eddie. is the one that did all the fabricating, the welding and all that on it. So they built them, built them really nice. They built them nice for us. Eddie also builds fire trucks, so <laughs> there's that. This is, who, this is, who does Fat Boy need to take care of? Grass fires, ranchers, Gra and you know, grass fires and brush fires. And okay, now, I'm expecting like fire trucks. Mm -mm. We like see some Mad Max out of the Thunderdome stuff. We we built a Eddie. Built Eddie, a, hang on, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie built a. A, uh, we call it a flat wagon. I mean, what it is, it's got the air compressor, it's got all the tools to change flats out in the in the field, I mean, that kind of stuff. I'm convinced Eddie must also be the tooth fairy in the local right, play, right. right? Yeah, yeah. That's great. Okay, can we see the other fire trucks? Sure. sure. Bow, bow. <laughs> I've known Eddie. I'm on Eddie pretty much my whole life, you know. That's what everybody that kind of keeps thing. saying. <laughs> grew up here. Right, right. I was born and raised, yeah, in Monaghan, so. That's how. So, yeah. There's probably ladies in this town that he coached that have kids coming up through softball and that kind of stuff that they still call him coach. Yeah. Now, he's not Mr. Nams. He's not Commissioner Nams. He's coach, you know, and that's just, you know. That's. Yeah. No, and, and like I said. Nothing better than that. Yeah, coach. yeah. And like I said, he's. 
He's done a lot for this community and he's still doing it today, you know, yeah. and, so. So now the pressure is on me and my little volunteer team, you know, and we're just like kind of refreshing, touching a paint, planting plants, sure, you know, sure. just trying to make the front porch feel cozy. Right. And now it's like, gosh, <laughs> he does everything for everyone. No oh, pressure. He's, he's a very humble individual though. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's sweet. He is. He's a very humble individual. So yeah, we've enjoyed but, it. Yeah. Hey, thank you yeah, sincerely. Thank I mean it. We appreciate yeah, you taking yeah, time to Uh, furniture is not who we are. It's what we do, but it's also, it's our way to reach out to people. We do feel like we're in the customer service business in that oh, yeah. we do care about customers. Like we do want to help you find what you're looking for, you know? We do live here and we like living here and we really love our community. And so I feel like it's just important to invest in it. It's hard to think about West Texas without acknowledging the positive impact oil and gas industry has made in its communities. For 30 years, we at Sun Pumper have aimed to do the same by providing the oil and gas industry with the most innovative, reliable, and affordable solar-powered injection systems available. Let us utilize our American-made products to maximize your efficiency putting you in the position to continue to make West Texas great. So we had a lot of expectations uh, that did not get met because of the wind. And we are going home with a to-do list filled with boxes that are unchecked, which is really hard for me because I'd like to check boxes but they're going to roll over in tomorrow and tomorrow is going to be a new day good America. I didn't even wear makeup today. I didn't put nothing on. Like this is camera ready. Yeah, I like it. So back in my building days, um, Sean used to help out on renovation. Sean also happens to be a volunteer firefighter in Midland as well. So that was kind of fun. Um, but really I just needed him to come bring his skills. And so I'm gonna tell Sean all the things that we're gonna do today. This is gonna sound crazy, but it's a good idea and I know we can do it. So I want to, so maybe take a jigsaw mm -hmm. and cut this right down the middle. Okay. Three and three, okay? So the window, we're gonna put it on that long window right there. Okay. And it's 62 inches. So I know if we go from here, it comes about here. So if we can cut it like this, two. So maybe we we'll probably cut this first and then go down, move these guys down right. so that I've got just a couple inches above. And then I'm get, we're gonna pause. I'm gonna have Tia paint these white and then we're gonna mount them on either side of that window. Mm -hmm. I brought some star screws. So that's first thing so we can get painted. So it can be drying so we can get it up in time. And then the second thing is the little light fixture. Mm -hmm. I have a new one. Okay. Pop that off and I have a, a new light fixture. We are making a sitting area and there's gonna be four chairs sitting out in front. So that's what we're working on today. She has a master plan. We are just the worker bees. The queen bee has told us how to arrange it and we just follow her directions. It's only 60 up and down. Only 60, that's it. Okay. This is simple. So these two, we're gonna, we're gonna unload. I'm gonna create like uh, an angle right over here by this well house. And the dirt's not as hard as you would think, 
but I'm just gonna wire them together and make a V. But I was thinking we could take a two by four and just cut it at an angle, knock it in, and then drill each one into one two by four so the wind doesn't blow it. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? I think so. I'm sure I'll ask you along the way. Uh -huh. And it's, <laughs> it may or may not be a good idea. That's yeah. what Kyle always asks. He's like, no, I have no idea what mm -hmm. you're doing. But, um, oh, can we acknowledge what is happening over there? So I would never, ever be able to convince Kyle to let me hand scrub every single paver. But Michelle has Kyle over there scrubbing every paver. And that makes me so freaking happy. So it's gonna, um, I mean, the smart. Each side okay. of this tarp. All right, I'm gonna, I'll move them later. I'm not having to move anything. Mm -hmm. So. We've got about a four hour window before the gusts start and it should be pretty nice, maybe 10 miles per hour ish. Um, and so we're just really gonna try to hurry to get it all done. We ran out of spray paint and I might have been a little on edge and a little touchy with Tori and Sydney. but they deserved it for ruining it and uh, using up all the paint. Tori loses her spray painting privileges. She accepts it. Was, was that your goal? Tori thought it would be a good idea to get the picnic table. Everybody applaud Tori. Okay, so it's gonna go a long ways right here. Flip it. Oh, Sean, we're so glad you're here. Yep. It would be me and Kyle. Super cute. <gasps> I haven't uh, the masking off yet. There. That'll be fine, right? Oh my gosh, I love it so, so much. So I'll pull that off today and we need to blow it. So this is where it'll go. Hey. Yeah, we're gonna um, get Sean to put some hoops on the back of it. Okay, cause we're gonna wire it. Oh my goodness! I just knew it was gonna be tall enough. Well, where did I measure 60 inches? Um, I don't like it at all. Wait, 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 I'm not sure about that. Hold on. Hold on, let me look. Ah! If I eat, if I put them um, square, there's no. We just have to center them. Go up a little bit, Sean. So we're just gonna, yeah, we're gonna have to center it on the the window itself. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, we're gonna um, we're just gonna put them on a tarp and have Sheridan paint them white. So I feel like you should always have something sweet. And so I want to show you the simplest way to make bonbons. Some people call them cake pops. Some people call them truffles. Basically it's a cookie mix, a brownie mix, or a cake mix that you dip in chocolate. So a little trick is if you buy your favorite white cake mix, you can do gluten-free, you can do paleo, you can do regular, whatever your favorite white cake mix is. If you want to flavor it differently, substitute the water or the milk for your favorite juice. So this one was flavored with prickly pear juice. I also wanted to make them a little like zesty, so I did two tablespoons of lime zest. <clears throat> Lemon, lime, for sure. I did two tablespoons of lime zest and I added it to the batter, baked the cake like normal, added my cream cheese icing, added another tablespoon of lime zest to give it that real sour kick. And instead of taking the time to make balls, I did more of a truffle. 
And this is easy because all you do is scoop right out of your bowl, plop it on your pan. That's it. Sometimes they can get a little soft and they slide off the stick like that. If you pop them in the freezer, it'll hold them on while you're dipping the chocolate in. Another little trick you can do if they're not sticking well, you can dip your little popsicle sticks in white chocolate and let them cool and they'll harden inside of the bonbon so it makes dipping a little bit easier and so we're going to do some of these like that and then we'll freeze some. Then I add just a few sprinkles. And why do I like sprinkles? Because they hide any imperfections. And this is lime sugar. So add just a tiny, 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 hmm, hmm, a lot of lime sugar. Let's try. Tori, come here. Come taste a cake pop, cause cake pops make you happy. Come taste a cake pop, cause cake pops bring you joy. Even if you're not a boy. Even if you're not a boy. Even if you're not a boy. All right. <laughs> Look, I didn't say all my rhymes were good. I just said I could rhyme. Okay, both of those are ready to eat. I'm quite excited. Yeah. Sugar, baby, sugar. Mm. Can you taste the lime? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um. What do you taste? You don't taste lime? I taste vanilla cake. Oh, that's real sad. No, let me get another bite. Adam, I like you better. <laughs> <laughs> For now. You taste any lime? No, I get one. See, I, thank you, Adam. I, probably just I have, really do. I probably just have like. A, That's nice. I really can. You and you are my favorite. Y'all suck. Y'all are fired. Teachers, suck up. There's a chance I'm going to be cutting that rug to fit that porch. I am sending Michelle to a garden sale where she's going to get some awesome flowers to bring back here that we are going to use in our project. We are so grateful to you, Teresa, because you have been the contact person in Monahan's. You knew everybody, you knew everything, and without you, we wouldn't be able to do this project. Does that mean I'm in everybody's business? No! I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> it means that you are a good community member. Right. Anyways, but thank you so much. Really, we appreciate it. We love what you do for the community. We love that you love Monahans and have a heart for, for the people here. Well, thank you. We're appreciative of y'all being here because we feel like we really do have so many good things, you know, going on in our community. We really couldn't have pulled this off uh, without the Monahans Chamber. I think we've all kind of uh, found some buddies up there and just super thankful that small town communities walk with each other on lots of different the levels. three geraniums and then two of these pink ones. Yeah, that would work. Because it'd be better to have too many than not enough. All right.
right, now let's get all our plants back to the house for the fun part of planning. As I'm scrolling through Pinterest or just looking at different websites and blogs, I have a running list of fabulous projects that I think are amazing that one day I would like to do. And so if I see something, even if I don't know where I'm gonna use it, I put it in this Pinterest board because as, um, as larger projects come along, I can go, yeah, you know what? You know what I can use on that project? So I have been obsessed with the palette wall succulent DIY that I saw, and I have multiple different versions and immediately knew that I wanted to use it at Brenda's house. Brandy, you know, tells me what to do. I'll just try to get it done. Sheridan. I have been friends with Sheridan since she was a tiny little kid. She was good friends with my son, Andy, throughout junior high and high school. They were buddies and I'm friends with her family. And she's an amazing artist and craftsman. She owns a company called Happy Olive Design Company. And she does all these crazy woodwork pieces and signs. And so she's been helping me with the production company, um, but she can fix anything. She's a handyman. And her husband nicknamed her Dan, because she can basically build anything. And so when we started filming, pretty quickly realized that I needed Sheridan um, with me. Uh, she's also going to be helping me create something special for each show with the wood. Um, so Sheridan just, she just can never leave. I kidnapped her. I kidnapped Sheridan and now she's stuck with me. Was I dancing on a pole? No, but I was. I was like this. You could have told me to scoot over. Pull it. I'm gonna pull you push. We wanted to take a quick break from all of our work over at Eddie's because we had heard about this new book from author Trey, who happens to be the local veterinarian. So I ordered a copy. I wanted to get signed for Marley because we are a sucker for kids' books. Eddie knows. He's been everywhere. We want to make as much seating as we can because they have a big family and they have family that live all around them. And that very much is a gathering space for their family. So I want to keep that in mind when we're creating the space to have lots of different seating options. Shine on the harvest moon. This is what dreams are made of, Kyle. I don't know. It's a good idea, tent, even though I said tent. You second guessed. Always. There we go. 
We didn't buy individual plants, we bought a pot at one. So we are gonna do finger painting for adults. And one of the easiest things that you can actually paint is prickly pears because it's just a series of ovals, daddies, mommies, baby ovals, and we're gonna stack them and that's it. And so one of the things I like to do when um, knowing that I'm gonna do a painting that needs a little bit of shading is I find an object to be my sun. And then I set the sun somewhere near my painting. So I'm gonna literally be using my fingers to paint. I'm gonna make an oval down here. If you wonder what we're making, it's gonna be a door leaner to go next to their front, their front door. So now I'm gonna start adding little tiny babies. Hello babies. One of the things you wanna do when you are starting is you wanna go with your darkest color first. I have about five or six colors on my palette. So I'm putting down my darkest color and then I'm gonna lay in my next color and the next color and how I'm going to layer those colors is I'm gonna follow where the sun's at. So I'm gonna to try to always hit the left side of my cactuses. The, the wife, Brenda, she really loves the modern farmhouse look. Um, she likes the whites and the grays and the light blues. So I'm even gonna add a touch of light blue to these cactuses because they're supposed to be fun and funky and uh, we're not going for super realistic here. So uh, it doesn't matter if, you know, they're, they're perfectly colored like a cactus would be. And you can't have a cactus without having cactus pricks. What needles. are they called? Needles. Let's try that again. You can't have a cactus without having cactus needles. So an easy way to add cactus needles is you can use a skewer or a toothpick. And I'm going to touch a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of this darker green. Just kind of blend it together and I'm just going around and dragging it. You don't have to add a million little needles. You just need a few needles here and there to give it the feel of a cactus. If you wanted to make something like this with your littles, um, your kids, your grandkids, they can be a part of this. And when you gift it to whomever, you can let them know that it was a family project. I mean, that's gonna look pretty dang cute next to their front door. What time are we at? 11 o'clock. I'm just talking to myself. I'm like, let's see now all the things we have left to do in the next hour and a half. Um, Like, like a hair up. The Calm is my hero. We are young. Heartache to heartache. We stand. No promises, no demands. Drugs are a battlefield. Whoa. It feels good to know that we made such a big impact on such a small space with things that they already have and love.
So the Nelms have been so ridiculously gracious through all of this. I feel like it just goes back to um, that good old school West Texas hospitality that we've been talking about. They just kept trying to feed us and make sure we had water and ask us, did do we need anything? And um, like the Nelms just drip community spirit and you see that in every interaction that we have with people so we got that firsthand it was you know they're our friends now done zero oh, yay I She just wants y'all. I've never seen you from there. It's nice. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just sitting in your swings. That's awesome. Thank you. Now, my gosh, you. you guys, y'all are so welcome. Now that we've learned everything y'all have done, it's like, pfft. We should have been here five years ago. Oh, no. I, we don't do it for that. You know that. It's the same reason y'all do what you do. I'm very grateful for all y'all. Trust me. Your time is valuable and uh, uh, it means a lot to us. It really does. really strikes a chord. You're sweet. Well, we loved it. And we like to get to know you guys and your amazing city. Because it's a pretty great city. That's uh, why we do what we do. We love our city, too. Wow. Well, you know. Okay. Thank y'all so much. Yes. I love this. We've so never had anything like this, you know. Thank so. you so much. Yeah. We're gonna so have to a lot of times it might seem from the outside that they're just objects that we're repainting or freshening or, you know, upcycling or, you know, but when the homeowners come out, those those are the chairs they rock their grandbabies in. Um, that's the table where they're gonna share meals together. And so for us to get to be invited to be a part of that space afterwards, and you know, they ordered pizza and you know, the grandmother brought over margaritas, that's a super special moment for our crew because we're then really truly being welcomed into their home and their family. And so, yeah, that's special. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And for more inspiration, be sure to check out our YouTube and podcast, Good Company Backstory, where we chat more with our guests on chasing dreams, loving our neighbors, and living our best lives. And for all our recipes, DIYs, and crafts, head over to our website for all the deets. I want to leave you with this. Mr. Rogers said, quoting his own mama, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Let's try to be helpers. Thanks. I'm checking on you. I'm checking on me. Our poor editor has to beep out every other word. Not sure why they thought I should be the host.